At Creek Carrier and Schaefer Trucking, a pre-trip inspection is more than a good idea. It's required. Before you put a commercial motor vehicle on the road, you need to be satisfied it's safe to operate. There's a common four-step inspection routine that's recommended for any driver to follow. It breaks the inspection into logical segments, including under the hood, in-cab equipment, a full walk around the tractor and trailer, and in-cab brakes. Whether you follow this sequence or develop your own, make sure all components are covered and do your inspection the same way every time. The following is an overview of the pre-trip inspection process. The engine is an integral component of the truck, so it's important that it's well cared for. Pocket the keys. Verify the parking brakes are on and open the hood. Begin your inspection on the right side. Make sure the compartment is in good overall condition with no obvious issues like leaks. Make sure oil and the coolant fluid levels are between add and full lines. And make sure hoses are not leaking, worn, or loose. Check belts are not worn or loose. Check the alternator, water pump, and air compressor for obvious signs of damage. If everything checks out under the hood, move on to your in-cab equipment checks. As you enter the cab, ensure the fire extinguisher is present and securely latched in the holder. Make sure the windows operate and that the glass all around the cab is clean and free of cracks. Start the engine and check the oil pressure and air pressure gauges. Ensure the oil pressure comes up in a couple seconds. It starts out high and drops as the engine warms up. Make sure the primary and secondary air pressure gauges both read low and change appropriately. Ensure the mirrors are clean and in good condition. Adjust them for proper sight lines and make sure they are tight. Check to see that the horn works and the wipers work as well. Make sure the steering wheel has the appropriate amount of play. 5.25 inches or less of play on a 20 inch wheel with power steering is the standard. Do not operate the equipment if the play in the steering wheel exceeds this amount. Check that the accelerator, brakes, and gear shifter aren't loose, sticking, or damaged. Listen for unusual noises that could signal a problem. The in-cab portion may be the easiest part of the pre-trip inspection, but that doesn't mean it isn't every bit as important as every other step. Conduct a full walk around of the tractor and trailer. Turn on your lights before you start your walk around inspection. Our equipment has a feature that will cycle through all the tractor and trailer lights and will allow you to perform your light checks during your walk around inspection. If you're not driving a tractor with this feature, you will need to check your tractor and trailer lights before starting your walk around inspection. Begin your walk around at the front left hand side of the tractor. Check for any fluid leaks or loose or missing lug nuts. Verify the tires are properly inflated. Observe top marker lights. Check the quarter fender. Ensure the load locks are secure and ensure your front drives are in good working order with no loose or missing lug nuts. Also ensure your rims are crack and damage free. Check the fifth wheel, the frame rail, and all the bolts on the frame for tightness. Typically, loose bolts will bleed rust color, which is an indicator they need repair. Then check your cross members and landing gears for damage and secure the crank handle. Walk down the side of the trailer and check the bottom frame rail for loose or missing rivets while also checking all the lights. Be sure the skirt is secure. Make sure the tandem airlines are suspended at least one foot off the ground. Check the springs holding the airlines to ensure they're in good working order. Make sure the rear tire set is in good condition. Check it the same way as the front tire set. Make sure the rear mud flap is within six inches from the ground to meet most state requirements. Continue to the rear of the trailer and check the top marker lights as well as the stop, turn, and tail lights. Make sure the ID markers and conspicuity tape are present. Make sure the door frame is in good shape. Make sure the brake drums, shoe, and linings are free from oil and are in good condition and the lining is at least a quarter inch when you look at it from the side. Minor surface damage may not be a problem, but anything that goes deep enough to expose cord may cause a tire to fail early. On the side of the trailer, check top, down, then under. Ensure the landing gear is free from cracks or damage and inspect the fifth wheel coupling. 
do not forget to check that the taillights are in good working order. Make sure the air lines from the tractor to the trailer are connected and the lines themselves in the suspension spring are in good condition. Check to see the tractor driver's door is functioning properly and that the weather seal is in good order. Ensure your braking system is functioning properly. Turn the engine on to build up air pressure. When the air pressure gauge reads above 125 PSI, release the parking brake and charge the trailer. Apply the foot brake, then turn off the engine and watch the gauges. Make sure the vehicle isn't leaking more than 4 PSI a minute, 3 PSI if you only have a tractor, and watch it for a full 60 seconds. Pump the air pressure down and notice where the low pressure indicator comes on. It should activate before 60 PSI. Continue pumping down. Somewhere between 20 to 45 PSI, the brake buttons should pop out, switching over from the parking brake to the emergency brake. Check the parking brakes will hold while the vehicle is in park. Release the tractor brake while the trailer brake is still applied and tug forward gently to make sure the trailer parking brakes will hold. Engage the tractor brake and release the trailer brake and tug forward gently to verify the tractor brake will hold. Roll ahead slowly and step on the foot brake to make sure the service brakes function. Watch for the vehicle pulling to one side or delayed stopping action. You've now completed a thorough pre-trip inspection and can drive knowing your equipment is ready for the road. Remember to start a pre-trip inspection at the start of each day and log that time as on duty, not driving. Safety first and foremost is our number one principle at Creek Carrier and Schaefer Trucking, and that begins every day with your pre-trip inspection.